Could there's a small development village located in northern Nepal. As you can see, there's a province there, I won't bother doing them out to you. Uh, it's a population of roughly 3,000, roughly 600 households. Uh, why are the beaches could they? Um, as you know, in, back in 2015, Nepal was pretty much destroyed by an earthquake. Uh, all the major sites received most of the aid, and all the towns were forgotten and left out support. So we thought it was a good idea that we focused on the small towns and try to give them something to build towards the future. As you can see the picture, it's a famous monument in Nepal. <coughs> that was afterwards, pretty much gone. This was what the landscape around Kudi looked like. Very green, lots of trees, lots of uh, agriculture. As you can see, the houses are very basic. Basic designs, slanted roofs and such. And this is what it looked afterwards. Pretty much entirely gone. So we thought it was a good idea to build in something there. Could build towards future. The environment in Kudi is pretty warm. It is described as a subtropical climate, even though it does snow at high altitudes. As you can see, the summer is very nice, and then during the winters, in high places, it can pretty much be like in the Arctic conditions. It's a subtropical climate. See, it's slightly cooler than the rest of the uh, country around it. Mm -hmm. The average temperature the ranges from just above 10 and up to the high 25. It doesn't get much lower than that. It's mean, just pretty warm. It's good. And then in the rainfall, you can see the, the wet seasons are during our summer. And they have very dry winters. Education in Nepal uh, is very low levels of literacy. Uh, it's very common for girls to be for boys, sorry, to be taught over girls. Um, one of our aims is to change this and help improve the literacy at an early age. As you can see from the graph, um, it's only really in um, girls are less than fifty percent, and back in two thousand fifteen for literacy, where boys are as high as seventy three. Honestly, that's pretty wrong. That's one of our aims to definitely change that in, our, in the town and the surrounding areas. This is the plan of our school. Um, it's a very basic, a basic, simple plan. Here we have the entrance, and when they walk in, there's a kind of general meeting area and a library up here. We have the canteen on the top left, and for kind of separate buildings, we can walk across with the four classrooms, and then the toilets at the end with the teachers, living accommodations up there at the far right. This is what our school looks like. It is one story, very basic design, so we can add stuff onto the side. Uh, we want to make the school's design as simple as possible so they can expand it themselves. There's no point in us making a school in a specific way and it doesn't suit their needs or what they want from the school. So we want to design a very simple plan that they can build upon themselves, give them some independence. This is the, what the classroom is looking inside, the very kind of American style. Again, they don't want to get in, want to make it a certain way in case they didn't agree with them. You can see, every classroom roughly fits about 24 people. This agrees with the US guidelines. I thought it was a very simple and easy design to build. This is what the teacher's accommodation look like on the inside. They have computer slash desk, whatever they need. There are bedrooms in the right, and a general kind of communal area to sit down for. The materials we're going to use, are, um, the majority of the buildings are going to be made of the earth bricks. They are used in this compressed machine, very cheap, very easy to make. It's general good, general labour. And then we're going to use for the frame of the roof, we're going to use timber. Uh, the tree there, Cedar's Theodora, uh, is the most common tree in Nepal. You can always find it anywhere, cheap and reliable. Like I said before, due to the the threat of earthquakes, we thought that they needed a special type of foundation to be used. These are called base isolation pads. They essentially work by absorbing the vibrations in the ground, meaning that the building doesn't shake as much as it normally would under an earthquake condition. But as you can see, normal building shakes a lot. Base isolation pads, almost no, no to little shake in the ground. Again, we want to use rain harvesting. As seen from the previous slide, there's not much rain during the uh, winter periods. 
Well, it'd be a good idea to give the school something they can let them use their own water. As you can see, the rain will fall off the roof into a gutter system to collect in our storage tank. Again, Nepal in general speaks to 10 of our power cuts daily. So we thought it was a good idea to have a throw for power for the schools and accommodation. We were going to use this using solar panels. Again, the solar panels will be grounded due to the threat of earthquake. They don't add in any additional roof or weight to the roof. And that's it. Any questions?